So this is the 1D4 speed run. Oof. Gotta be careful. <laughs> Playing Queen's Gambit. We've been playing a lot of Queen's Gambit. Here we have a Queen's Gambit declined. So I'll play Knight C3. And of course we're just putting pressure here. We're fighting for the E4 square. And Knight of 6 will take on D5. So this is kind of known as the exchange variation where you exchange on D5. And now uh, Bishop G5. So I like just this kind of classical setup. Thousands of games like this. Queen c2, e3, bishop d3, c6. All right, c6 is good, let's play e3. Yeah, total cutie there with a very good point, Siddhartha. A lot of these short and sweet courses that are just free on Chessable, that already has all the info you need to play the opening. Like at 1500 level, you really, you really don't need a lot, but those short and sweet courses are already like more than enough, more than enough. And if you just have those and you mostly work on like your middle games and your calculation, that will be the way to get the most amount of improvement and um, reasonable amount of time. All right, we're just gonna develop here. Bishop wants to go to this long diagonal. Queen usually wants to go to C2. And I like putting this line on E2 in these positions because then it doesn't block the F pawn to play F3 here. This is a position where F3 is just like a good move. Even Ben Feingold would play F3 in this structure. And he knows that. <laughs> All right, bishop g4. Actually, yeah, I think f3 would be quite reasonable even here. Could also go queen to uh, c2. Let's play f3. I actually don't don't mind this move at all. Then we'll play knight e2, queen c2, and we can consider castling queenside in this kind of position. But usually, white is going kingside. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, Siddhartha. Hey, Sombrero, how's it going? Okay, knight d7. Now I'm thinking maybe knight f4. I kind of like this one because it'll allow us to take the two bishops. grab this one and I'm just gonna castle here if we have any trouble on this diagonal we'll just go bishop f4 and kind of shut it down Yeah, interesting position. We'll see what happens. Okay, queen c7. Let's play here. Bishop d6, but black is hesitating a bit. <laughs> yeah, we're almost done, I see. Almost done. Maybe worried about some knight b5 stuff. Takes rook c1, queen b8. I don't think any of this stuff really works. So yeah, bishop d6, I think this is right. Okay, now we have knight e2. Also play a move like Queen E2. Kind of fancy. Queen E1, Rook E1. A few ideas here. I 
Yeah, let's go rookie one, actually. I kind of feel like this is the most useful move. Okay, castle's queenside. That makes sense. Getting out of the, uh, the check. Okay, now I kind of want to play queen d2 here. Whoa, hold up, hold up. Knight b5? Once you notice knight b5, it's hard to look away. Takes rook c1. And black is going to have some big problems on the c file. Knight c5, rook takes c5. Yeah, I think knight b5 is a killer. Rook c1, knight c5, rook takes. I almost forgot about this one, but remember guys, we were already we were already thinking about this tactic in this position. I was considering here knight b5. Right, rook c1, then I thought, okay, well queen b8, and I didn't see clear follow-up. Then black castled, and I totally forgot until a few moments ago that this is actually an idea. Now bishop takes f4 is kind of annoying, but I think we can just take the queen, bishop takes h2 check, go king f2, black takes on c7, it's two minor pieces, but that'll be annoying. That would be annoying to win for sure. Yes, very, uh, very sharp couple of moves here, rookie on castles, knight b5. Mm, I don't know if it's resignable yet, actually. I would play this. This is good. This is, I think this is the best choice. I like this one. Oh, but he should have, he should have grabbed this pawn. Oh, he could have grabbed another pawn. Hmm, that's no good. That's that's a bit of a slip. Because now we can defend this one. We can go g3, h3. I'll go g3 here. No, I wouldn't. I I wouldn't resign here. No, no. And in blitz and rapid, you you force your opponent to prove it. Because it's not that easy. You can still. There, black has a lot of knights I could blunder my queen to. So, no, not a fan of the resign. Yeah, exactly. Especially if he had taken on h2. I think that position is like pretty annoying. Okay, so like I really want to just play e4 and just open everything up. It comes at the cost of weakening the king, but I think it doesn't feel like there's a lot black can do here. I just don't see any tactics here. So I think we can kind of get away with this one. <laughs> So Fasca, plenty of people resign. In fact, if uh, if you if you watch previous episodes of the speedrun, you'll see people resigning when they're like peace down. <laughs> people always complain in the chat that they resign too early. They're like, why would you resign at this level? <laughs> I'm gonna take here. <laughs> I 
I think this plan is absolutely fine. I think this is, I think this is a great way to play. Uh, I'm gonna push e5 here, or we can take as well and try to um, get the rook in. Take, take bishop d6. So if e5, f4, Like, put the queen g4 there. Also, go e6. Okay, I think we want to open stuff up. I'm going to take. Then I think I want to open this up as well. Kind of Steinitz style. Famous game, yeah? Steinitz von Bartelbein. But only GMs follow the perfect winning plan till the end. Yeah, exactly. That's why That's why you shouldn't resign. You should force your opponent to uh, to show the technique. Okay, this one is like definitely annoying. We want to be careful of this. It's like king f1, there's like takes, like h1, some uneasiness. So let's go rook f1. And we're okay with this one because there's actually not like a lot of danger with letting black take on g3, I think. And then we worth it to trade rooks also. Knight is kind of hanging on h5. So we just take on f8. Black has to take with the knight. And yeah, kind of lose a lot of coordination. Yeah, definitely we could have taken and then taken on f3. I think that would have been... That would have been totally winning, for sure. With 95, probably I'll go bishop e4, maybe bishop e2, also interesting. Just hitting the knight on h5, kind of forcing the issue. Okay. Yeah, let's go here. I like this one. <laughs> no, that endgame was totally winning. It's like extra exchange, extra pawn. No, that endgame was good enough for sure. All right, let's take here. Uh, 
Alright, Rook D8. We'll take another pawn. Just with check. Okay, now I just gotta find good square for the queen. Annoying. Now I do wish I went for the end game. I'm just going to try to get out of dodge, keep my queen as far away <laughs> from the king as possible. Takes, I don't think that's good, I think knight g4 was, was much more annoying. This one I think lets us off the hook. Try real hard not to get mated here. Okay, gotta take this one. Okay, GG. <laughs> oh man, close one. <laughs> I don't think.
think I was ready for like a tough game. Yeah, GG Hostbud. GG. No, doing really well actually. Definitely missed some chances, like let's pull it back. Okay, here for example. Knight g4, right? <laughs> Tafaska has learned this their lesson. The whole game was just to teach Tafaska a lesson. <laughs> Yeah, once I saw bishop d8 check, David, I just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know what's happening here. But this looked really scary because you have this one and this one and this one. Rook d2, maybe. I think rook d2, I was gonna play here. But. Could easily be some. some tactics. I take with the bishop. Is there some point like rook h2 or something? Yeah, then king g1. Oh, just take on f3. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then it's that would be three pieces, that's too much. And bishop g2. It's really complicated because we have um, we have this queen e8 check kind of hanging in the position. Yeah. Like, any checks, we go king h1. If knight f3 check, king h1. Knight h5, we have queen e8 hitting this one. So it's... Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know, Alexa. It, it, it's out of play, but... White just needs one move. <laughs> Just needs one move, right? So it might be a tourist, but it's like it's at the hotel. It it's talked to the concierge. It's ready to go. It's ready to go. <laughs> so yeah, this is some sharp stuff. Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and file that one under the GGs. B4, B5. Yeah, sure, sure. All right, we are continuing the 1d4 speed run. And actually, I like knight c3 here. Okay, c5, Tarash defense. Wow, playing this out of respect, huh? Look at this, Tarash defense, very nice. I actually like playing against Tarash defense. I feel like I like playing against the uh, the structure. Uh, yeah, gonna complete this one at uh, 2200. I think. I think both runs. I'm gonna just go to 2200 and then call it a day. Um, okay, so now there's different ways of playing this position. Nowadays, uh, DC5 is actually. 
quite popular, but I'm going to go with the classic stuff. This is the way Rubenstein actually showed this way and won some nice games with this setup. And to this day, it remains one of the most challenging ways of, of dealing with this system. Castling and then playing against this d5 pawn. With this bishop kind of roaming the whole diagonal. Okay, castles. So there's different lines here. There's d takes c5, there's bishop g5. I'll take on c5. Bishop takes c5. Okay, now we'll play bishop g5. Now we're putting a lot of pressure on the d pawn and kind of compelling black to push d4. Okay, bishop e6. I think we can take this one. So if queen takes, we have knight takes d5. And I think there's queen b2, knight c7. Rook d8, queen c1. I think I've seen this variation before. Let's take it. My opponent might still even be in book, actually. Knight c7. Yeah, Craddock. Well, have you seen the previous episodes on YouTube? Because there's, there's a few of them. So if queen takes, we get a rook takes. And then we're going to take on e6 and spoil black structure. Okay, now time to think. As far as I understand, white has small advantage. Because <laughs> pawn on e6 is weak. First instinct just says e3, just like blunt this bishop, take the d4 square and give ourselves a chance to move our knight, like knight g5. Could be a potential idea. Let's play it. I'm not sure about bishop a3. I think we take on e6 and take on d8. Okay, h6. But I, I think white is taking more pieces. Let's back it up for a sec. If bishop a3, we take a bishop, takes rook, we take a rook. So we're up a piece. Yeah, yeah. No, no, all good, all good. I'm just explaining. Now this one is hanging, but like I just, I don't really see obvious way to take advantage. Knight d4 black can just take it. And I think this is a position where we want to keep at least one pair of rooks on the board. Like, we need a rook to one day do some damage. Maybe not necessarily, but I would want to keep a rook. Man, I'm trying to figure out what to do with this knight. It's not really, not really coming to me. I'm just going to play rook c4. Sorry for the randomness. The rook just looks good here. It has this square, has this square. Okay, and then I'm just gonna play here. And my idea is just to be annoying. 
like maybe see if black can play a5. Not that a5 is like such a terrible move, but it it's a move that we would induce. Or b5, okay, looks like we induced b5. b5 is nice because this opens up some play on the c file. Now rook a6, bishop b6, I don't think our rook does much there. Let's go rook over this way. And then we'll use this one to kind of provoke. Actually, JB, I just deleted a command. So we have one, we have one available that we can do for the, uh, the party. Yeah, y'all have to make one. Okay, so now what do we want to do here? A3? No, A3 is going to be weak. I don't know if we want A3. Maybe Rook C1? This one is kind of hanging. I think Rook C1, Knight is coming to D3. So maybe I should play Knight E5. Yeah, let's go 95. Does give black the option to trade knights with knight d3, so I'm not really not sure if we're playing this one. So right, get rook d2. Honestly kind of underestimated this move as well. Wow, really missed this move. So kind of playing for tricks here. If rook takes, I want to go bishop e4. And put some pressure on the c file. Ooh, I don't know. We're taking a lot of risk, guys. Taking a lot of risk here. Yeah, I could have also played it a little bit safer like rook f4, but... Feeling a little frisky, so... Well, now we're here. Now we're here. So now we're here. Yeah, we have to still equalize probably after a got four. I don't know if it's like losing guys. I think Rook F4 was still very playable. I think these positions are often very resilient, but um, okay, here we're taking Taking some risks. Oh no, I totally missed this one. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> this is really bad. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. We just got call an ambulance. And this one's coming next. Oh, brutal guys, brutal. I mean, speed runs. Slowing down.
Yeah, yeah, we're just busted. I think. I mean, looks, looks completely lost. So here, there's just this and this. Yeah. Otherwise, I think we just get mated. Okay. Yeah, we're losing this one. The other loss was at this level. <laughs> yeah, Rick G2 finds it. Of course. Well, that's going to be GG. Played a little bit too, too uh, carefree here. Mm, yeah, I like 95. This always happens. Like you stop one idea, but then you allow, you allow a second idea. Rook takes G7. I don't know. I mean, just same thing, right? Rook F7. That's okay. I uh, know. I mean, 2200. All one d4 speed run. Um, all right. Now d4 c5. We're pushing, and I like to take space in these positions. Maybe we'll go. Maybe we'll go further. Actually, maybe we'll go to 2400. Maybe we'll keep. It, maybe we'll just keep it going, guys. Maybe we'll just keep it going to 2400. I don't know. I mean, why not, right? Why not? Um, all right, now let's take more space. Kind of play like a King's Indian. Trex, it's already mentioned it because you, I saw you were asking. Uh, the loss was a couple days ago. Nine of six. Um, okay, now there's different ways to play it. There's H3, F3, 92, knight G3. Lots of different setups here for white, I'm honestly I feel like there's so many. <laughs> Let's play with F3. I kind of like these setups. H4 not, mm, not as good in this exact position. Um, but there's lots of different ways to play. Okay, let's castle. Yeah, sorry guys, sorry. And now we're just we're just developing here. Okay, a6. Time to go a4, and keep black from getting this pawn break. So rook b8. Go queen d2 here. B5. Yeah, black playing, black playing well here so far, I feel. Let's go F4. Hey, John, how's it going? So now we're just playing for our main plan in the center here to push E5. It's always an interesting question whether or not to insert A, B, A, B. A lot of players do it automatically, but I don't think it's uh, necessarily always useful. Let's open the A file. Okay, B, 491. So now I'm going to transfer this knight over here somewhere. 93 or knight F2. Probably 93. And then we're going to try to get ready to push e5. Okay, e5. I don't really get this move. I feel like it's kind of slow. 
Let's play h3 just to cover the g4 square. A6. And I wonder if black wants to go b3. We could go b3, but then we would be opening up the diagonal for the bishop, allowing something like knight h7. No, I think we push e5 here. I think we gotta push forward. Because I don't think black is defending this one. I think we get the big center. Okay, knight h7. Well, we'll see, we could be wrong. Should have f4, g5. Ooh, feels so weakening. Knight takes h5 there. Take on uh, f4, take on g7. Feel like we must have really strong attack. Yeah, let's go bishop f4. On g5, we can also just go bishop takes g5, and I think black's king is gonna be too open here. If not g5, okay, rook c8. I guess getting out of the way of e6, but this gives us time to bring everything in. Okay, just gonna defend this one and get ready, get ready to complete complete the picture with knight e3. Alright, b3. Let's push it. Hey David, how's it going? Knight b4. Now time to bring the queen in, I think, somewhere. Maybe just simple e6, opening up the light squares, e6, f5, feels annoying, hmm, could also just play d6 and get it past d pawn. Let's go d6. Let's give black this square. I don't know. We'll see if this works out. Okay, so we can push d7, rook e4, take, take. That's an exchange. But I want more guys, I want more. for cheapo and here something knight f6 I don't even know how the cheapo works maybe we push d7 so we can take and go d7 okay but now king takes Let's just put here. I'm just 
just getting out of uh, bishop d4. I don't know, I like our position, but it's like... Okay, actually, maybe this is the idea. We gotta drop back and hit... Hit f7. Okay, so defense <laughs> ahead of time. Uh, anyway, it's a good idea. Let's... Uh, Now let's bring this guy in. Really need to get to this square. Man, knight is just so in the way. Black is being very annoying by not trading off. I'm like offering this beautiful bishop and just like not taking, <laughs> not freeing my knight. It's really rude actually, to be honest. Okay. Um, Let's go back. That's just how it's gonna be, I guess. We might have to rethink. <laughs> Maybe knight d5 next. Maybe that's how we'll do it. Cause this is good. This, this I like. I like this construction. Okay, let's go here. To end game territory. I feel like the end games are good. I like the bishops in the end game. Oh, wait, but this one's hanging. I don't like that. No, time to bring this one back. Just going after this guy. If I can take this pawn, then I just feel like super, super comfortable. Also, if black does nothing, maybe just queen e7, we can just break through immediately. Let's see if knight c6, I think we just take. Queen e7, and then we're just advancing d7, d8. Bishop f8, maybe. Okay, takes on b2. Can I go queen e7? I hate leaving this B pawn alive, but I don't see don't see what black does here, so <laughs> we we gotta do it. We gotta be brave. We gotta be brave. I feel like I should just take. I mean just keep the <laughs> keep the pawn, but this this feels convincing. I don't know. Okay, queen here. Well we're promoting with check. Now we just have to figure out how to win with extra queen. I think this one and this one, right? Pretty straightforward. And then we'll win on the light squares. Okay, that's gonna be a GG. Tough game, tough game.
Yeah, a lot of pawns hanging in that game. Oh, more good news for this weekend. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, this weekend's gonna be fantastic. Hey, from Montreal. <laughs> How's it going, oatmeal? Okay, let's update the score. Yeah, that's right, Steve. At this point, with this pawn, we're just pushing this one. So if black doesn't keep the queen on d7, none of these pawns really matter. You know, it's all about the first pawn that promotes. Like, black's b-pawn is really strong, but white's pawn was first. So that's, uh, that's all that really matters here. And so we don't really care about this one because we're just kind of breaking through by force. <laughs> 